Hi all, Dr. Metter here. Uh, let's look at this problem from complete problem set number two of our diagonal forces unit. A student is pulling a, a 20, 20 kilogram box across the floor by applying a 240 Newton tension. The coefficient of friction between the box and the floor is 0.2. How many forces are acting on the box? Well, we have the force of tension from the, the student pulling it with a rope or a line. So we have our force of tension. We have our force of weight that's pulling it, the box toward the center of the earth. And because there's a surface here, we have a force normal. We also have, because we know we have a coefficient of friction, we have a force of friction that is opposing motion. So we have one, two, three, four forces acting on this box. So if we want to get at what the magnitude of the normal force is, we have to think about all of the forces that are in the vertical direction. And to do that, we must resolve the, uh, the force of tension into its vertical component, so the F of T vertical, and we must and its horizontal component, the F of T horizontal. So we know that, just to define these real quick, we know that the force of T vertical is equal to the force of T tension overall times the sine of theta, which theta would be 23 degrees, that's the angle at which it's being pulled, and that the force of tension in the horizontal is our F of T overall times the cosine of theta, which is also 23. So to get at the force normal, we need to look at the force net in the vertical direction. And the first force net in the vertical direction is the mass times the acceleration in the vertical direction. And since we know that this box is not moving up or down, we can say that this acceleration is equal to zero, zero, and then the, therefore the force net is equal to zero. And therefore, when we look at the force net in terms of forces, which we know is defined by all the forces added up in the, in the down direction, minus all the forces added up that are pulling the box or pushing the box in the up direction. So we can say zero is equal to What's the force pulling it down? Well, that's FMG, that's the only one. Minus, what are the forces pushing the box or pulling the box up? Well, that's the force normal, right? Opposing the surface. And plus the force of tension in the vertical direction. Since this side is equal to zero, we can say the force of weight is equal to the force normal plus the force of tension in the vertical, which we've defined to be force of tension times the sine of theta. And we know this force of tension is equal to 240 Newtons as it was given in the problem. So our force of weight is our mass times gravity. So 12, 20 kilograms times gravity, which is 10 meters per second squared, is equal to the force of normal, which we're trying to find, plus our force of tension, 240 Newtons, times the sine of theta, which is 23. So we get a force normal that's equal to about 106 Newtons. Okay, so our force normal here, 106 Newtons. All right, I'm gonna erase so that we can start to look at our force of friction. This real quick. Okay, so our force of friction it's asking about now. Well, we define the force of friction as our coefficient of friction, and here it's the coefficient of kinetic friction times our force normal. Well, the four coefficient of kinetic friction is given, 0.2, times our force normal, which we calculated here, 106 Newtons. And so we end up with a force of friction equal to 21.2 Newtons there. So when it asks about the magnitude of the net force, well, we know that there's no net force in the vertical direction because this box is not moving up or down. We determined that previously. So when we think about the force net on the box, we're really thinking about it only in the horizontal direction because that's the only place where there's movement and therefore acceleration.
So we say force net is equal to, of course, mass times acceleration. And of course, we're thinking about it in the horizontal. And that acceleration is non-zero. Is equal to, in terms of forces, all of the forces pulling the box toward the right minus all of the forces that are opposing motion or pulling the box toward the left. Okay, so we have our force net. We don't need to think about acceleration yet. So let's think about it in terms of force net is equal to all of the forces pulling it toward the right, which would only be our force of tension in the horizontal. Minus all of the forces pulling it toward the left, which would only be our force of friction which we determined here. So our force net is equal to the force of tension in the horizontal, which is F of T times cosine of theta minus our force of friction, which would be mu times F normal, which we already determined to be 21.2 uh, newtons. So we can fill this out. F T is 240 newtons times the cosine of theta, which is 23 minus 21.2 newtons and we get an f net equal to about 200 newtons right here 200 newtons and we know that this is equal to the mass times the of the of the system times the acceleration of the system so we can say we know our mass is 20 kilograms and we know that our force net is 200 newtons. So now we can determine our acceleration, which would be equal to approximately 10 newtons here. And if you do the math all out, you get about 9.98 if you did it all together. Okay, so describing the box's speed, well, we have a positive acceleration in the positive direction. So we have an increasing speed of the box, thanks to that student pulling uh, the box by the string or by the, the rope. Okay, I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.